Jenner inoculating his 18-month-year-old son with swine pox. His son will die of TB when he is 20. Here's another photo, uh, picture. Getting the jab. Jenner inoculates an 8-year-old eight, boy named James with cowpox. The boy will die of TB at 21. Erasmus. The, grand, the grandfather of ape man Charles Darwin, since Jenner, the Jesuit Jenner, claimed that humans and animals shared the same diseases, the next step was to proclamate the idea that they had a common ancestor. This is what da uh, Darwin said about Jenner and his vaccination in a letter that was written to Jenner uh, February 24th, 1802. And it goes on in the letter and it says, In a little time it may occur that the christening and the vaccination of children may always be performed on the same day. Christening means sprinkling babies with water to make them a Christians in the, in the, uh, the Jesuit uh, Vatican society. Well, christening and vaccination are the inventions of that old serpent, the devil. So what they want to do is they want to mix the blood of, a, of an animal and a human, and that will pollute God's uh, precious uh, baby, pure blood, and introduce diseases and other things, and it's a celebration, a sick celebration, and mixing ha animal blood and human blood together in a baptism. Here's another headline out of the Salt Lake Tribune, July 21, 2005. Many of you heard that the gay marriage became legal in Canada, but what's interesting about this article was the legislation drafted by the Prime Minister, Paul Martin, a Roman Catholic. Should that surprise you? After World War II, the Vatican was scrambling to uh, cover up all of their uh, connections with uh, Hitler and the Third Reich, and uh, so they created Vatican II. And Vatican II, in, in the early 60s, they changed their laws. Instead of persecuting the Protestants, we just call them separate brethren. Now, since they've changed their philosophy, now the Pope go ahead, goes ahead and says, Heaven open to everyone, says Pope. And uh, so you have to be, says here, that heaven is open to all as long as they are good. So they changed their tactics. Now they're all about lovey, lovey, dove. This following article was featured February 4, 2003 in Chicago Sun-Times newspaper. Vatican, Potter's Magic OK, witchcraft found not to be anti-Christian. So they speak on both sides of their face. So one, one time they're saying it's evil, one side says it's good, and it goes back and forth. This is the current black pope, considered the most powerful man in the world. And here's a diagram of how the pyramid is set up. First you have Satan on top of the pyramid, the god of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. And then the next one in line is the black pope, the superior Jesuit general. And then it goes to the white pope, the papal Caesar. Remember Caesar, he sits on the throne of Caesar and also on the, on the, the throne of the church. So he has two roles, but he doesn't control Nothing, because the black pope controls it all. He replaces the white pope of his own choosing, according to what Lucifer wants. Then it goes to the archbishops of New York, and through them, it goes to the Knights of Malta, Knights of Columbus, the Masonic Supreme, and then it's all broken down to the different secret societies on down from there. Here's another diagram of how the pyramid works. It comes through the Vatican, the Jesuit, the black general. And then it goes down to the Illuminati, the CFR, the International Bankers, the Mafia, the Club of Rome, the Opus Dei, the Masons, the New Age Movement. Remember, they're behind all of this New Age witchcraft movement. They create the problem, and then they say, oh, we don't create it. We hide behind the sheep. We hold the sheep in front of us, so that's all you see. You don't see the wolf behind the sheep clothing. And so they, they're the creators of all this, and there's many more secret societies but this is kind of a diagram you can see how, how it all operates. Here's an interview with the Jesuit in the Spectrum newspaper. With a, and the interview went on to say, and it says, What is the ultimate goal of the Jesuits? 
Their ultimate goal is to rule the world with the Pope of their making from Solomon's rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. That is their ultimate goal. And what is he going to do? He's going to destroy the Catholic Church. He's going to destroy the Vatican. And he's going to go down in Jerusalem and, de- and, and demand to be worshipped as God for three and a half years. This is their plan, folks, is to deceive you. They'll destroy the Vatican. Nobody will have tie- will make connections between the Vatican and the new Antichrist. And then they'll have all people worship him after World War III. Why is April 15th so significant? It, it is the day that the Titanic was sunk. And what is so significant about the Titanic? Well, there was people that were against the Federal Reserve System, and so they were very wealthy, well-to-do people. And so the Vatican uh, built a, the Titanic for one reason only, and that was to get the rich people on board who are against the Federal Reserve System and to, uh, to sink it. And that was the whole reason behind the Titanic. Here's the Jesuit Father Brown who gave the orders to the captain of the Titanic to sink it. Here's, here's the captain of the Titanic right here. He was a Jesuit, and he's the one that took the orders from Jesuit Father Brown to sink the ship. And he's one of the last pictures that were taken. Here's another photograph from Father Brown's own very own camera documenting what's going on. And here is the captain of the Titanic looking over, saying goodbye. You know, he has his orders now to sink the, sink the Titanic. Here's other photographs from Father Brown's camera documenting the people that are on the ship so they make sure that those who are against the, the Federal Reserve System are killed. The, the captain of the Titanic sailed that same route for over 20 years. He knew the waters as good as the back of his hand. He went pedal to the metal as fast as he could, and when he hit the iceberg, he made sure that the lights stayed on and the music kept playing. As the ships were passing at night, they saw white flares shooting in the skies. Now everybody knows in the Navy that if you shoot white flares that it means that you're having a celebration, a party. Red flares means that you're in trouble and you're sending out an SOS for help. So the ships that were passing by at night, and you can see this on the movie The Titanic, that they shot white flares in the sky and not red ones. This is proof alone that this was done by design so they can sink and kill those who are on board. So approximately approximately a year later after the Titanic was sunk, the Federal Reserve System came into power. And what does the Lord say about money? The love of money is the root of all evil. So basically the money on, that you're carrying in your pocket is nothing but the Jesuit controlled fiat currency. Why is April 15th so significant? It is the day that all 14th Amendment citizens of this American empire, like the good serfs that they are, go to confession once a year and confess to the government with their tax returns. We're going to show that you're a nothing but a Roman citizen under, under the 14th Amendment. First of all, we'll start out that in law, Every letter in a word is important. We're going to show you in the Constitution between the difference between the big C versus the little C. To show you the difference, we're going to look into in this little book called the Constitution of the United States. If, if you have one, pick it up and look at it and read it and study it. The first time the Constitution me- mentions a citizen It's in capital C of the United States. This is Article 1, Section 2. We're going to go through here and show you throughout this that there was a time.